Hi guys, welcome back. This is Matt Chat episode 422, uh, featuring a look at the game Knights of the Chalice, which has become kind of a minor obsession of mine here lately. <laughs> I've been playing this thing uh, pretty much non-stop, and I finally decided to, to, uh, to halt my gameplay to share this video with you, because I think it's a game you're going to be really interested in as well. And it came out back in 2009, it's by... Uh, HeroicFantasyGames.com, a developer named Pierre Begg. And it's a good old turn-based, uh, party-based tactical combat game that uh, the developer compares to the Dark Sun Shattered Lands game. <laughs> and uh, Troika's uh, Temple of Elemental Evil. It's based on the Open Gaming License 3.5. Now, it's a game, you, 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 maybe you've heard of it, maybe you haven't. Uh, it's kind of, I think, slipped under the radar because it's not on GOG, it's not on Steam. You can only get this directly from that developer's website at uh, HeroicFantasyGames.com, which I, I think is kind of sad because I think that's sort of kept it out of the limelight a little bit. Uh, so anyway, maybe this video will help. Uh, so anyway, I hope you enjoy the video. And remember, if you want to buy this game, uh, go to HeroicFantasyGames.com and you can pick it up there for about 16 bucks. Anyway, we've got a lot to cover here. So without further ado, here is Knights of the Chalice. All right, folks, and here we go. Let's get this little puppy up and running. I think you're really going to like this game. It's uh, quite a treat, and it really feels to me like what comes to mind when you think about an indie CRPG. Uh, what does that mean? Does it mean just a, you know, a, a game for a smartphone that's been sort of crammed into a shovel word title for the PC, or does it mean something that's a, a true labor of love you know, sort of the one-man band who has worked on it for years, <laughs> tell now how many hours, <laughs> uh, doesn't play much like the AAA games, not trying to be like the other games out there, the commercial games, just comfortable being in its own skin, I think is a good way to, to describe this game, Nice at the Chalice. So. Anyway, great art, great graphics. Uh, you know, let me just say, Starting out off here, what kind of reminds me of. Uh, so I was trying to think about what this game felt like first time I played it. And I was thinking back to the early to mid-90s. Somewhere in there, there would be... we get these shareware discs. Disc magazines, and sometimes it'd be RPGs. Usually kind of a roguelike. Uh, but it feels like one of those games, but a really, really good one. Uh, or maybe a DOS era. Uh, art, uh, indie CRPG. I mean, you're not going to get this confused, even with the graphics uh, being in that style. You're not going to be thinking you're playing an Ultima title. You know, it doesn't have that kind of level of uh, development, uh, that that much stuff in it. Basically, it's this is more linear, more focused, uh, shall we say? Uh, but you know, for all that, a lot of fun. I actually kind of prefer this because, you know, I don't like the games. Uh, I know a lot of people like these open-ended, go anywhere you want to kind of games, uh, but like the, this designer, we'll, we'll get more into this, uh, his sort of philosophy is that makes you feel kind of like a ship out at sea with no rudder. <laughs> you know, like, where do I go? What do I do? Uh, sometimes it's nice to have a little bit of intentionality from that designer. Uh, so anyway, let me just show you the uh, credits here before we jump into this. So this is the programmer and designer, uh, Pierre. Apparently that last name is French origin, although I think he's from the UK, but it's Beg. So it's Pierre Big, I think is the pronunciation on that. And uh, I said one man band, but as you can see here, there's actually what, one, two, three, four, at least five people. And he's got some beta testers there, four beta testers. But uh, Pierre's kind of an interesting dude. Uh, I was trying to get some information about him. He seems uh, very quirky, very eccentric. He wouldn't put this game on Steam or GOG only sells it from his website so that's I think prevented some of the it's probably stunted the growth of this game in ways that have nothing to do with the game itself just the distribution oh uh, why would he want to do that why not just put it up on Steam why not just put it up on God 
and I'm sure he's got his reasons, but my guess is he, <laughs> it's all about the money. <laughs> you know, when you put a game up on those services, for one, you have to figure out how to do it, and that takes time away from development. Uh, but I'm pretty sure they both take a cut, and I don't think there's necessarily a lot of profit in this to begin with, so it's, it's probably just like the indie book publishing. You know, I would make a lot more money if I just sold my books as sort of a print-on-demand right off my website. Even if, even though the number of copies would be minuscule compared to what the publisher can do. You know, if you're making, a, say, you know, if, if I was getting all 50 bucks every time somebody bought a copy of the book, you know, that, that would quickly surpass the royalties, which are like 10%. So, you know, maybe he knows more what he's doing. I saw some pretty stupid comments about it. You know, and, and I don't really know what, what's going on from, from his uh, perspective, but I'm sure he's got his reasons. I don't think he's a dumb guy, <laughs> you know, especially after playing his game. I, I think he probably knows what he's doing. But, but anyway, enough about that. Uh, let's get into Knights of the Chalice. Uh, so what I want to do here, as usual, I'll show you uh, some of the early parts, and then we'll skip ahead and show you some of the later game. Uh, but there's just a lot of interesting stuff, and if you're really into this, I when you're buying the game and downloading it, Take a look at his designer notes on his webpage, and he, he kind of goes through his philosophy and why he did, did things the way he did. You know, just as somebody who writes about games and is interested in game history, that part's almost as interesting to me as the game itself. But <laughs> uh, here we'll be playing the game. What does this say? Yeah, please try the free demo first. That's probably good. I didn't play the free demo. I just went straight for the game. I guess I disobeyed Pierre there. <laughs> Uh, but, you know, that's that's pretty cool. So if you don't like the... I think the free demo would probably give you a pretty good taste of this. And this is not one of those games where the story is going to be the, the key selling point. You know, if you like this, it's because you're interested in uh, combat leveling mechanics. Uh, this does use the open game license. So it's more or less D&D, &D, basically. And I really appreciate some of you... Uh, on the Mad Chat Facebook page, I was trying to figure out what exactly is this open gaming license? Uh, what what the heck does that mean exactly? You know, and, and Pierre talks about this a little bit too, but really what it amounts to is there's certain... I guess public domain's not the right word for this, but there, there's certain sort of generic, anybody could have thought of it, aspects of D&D, &D, uh, or certain uh, sort of the basic concepts that Wizards of the Coast said, you know, it's fine. If you want to go off and make a computer game using this system uh, so people will know what it is, you don't have to roll your own, so to speak, uh, go ahead and do that. But don't use any uh, specific things from D&D, &D, Wizards of the Coast. Uh, so, for example, you couldn't say, this is set in the Forgotten Realms. <laughs> or this is, uh, this. here comes uh, Raceland uh, from uh, uh, the uh, Dragonlance novels. You can't use that kind of uh, IP uh, something like a name or a place but if it's just say like a magic missile spell you know go ahead and use that spell because uh, that's <laughs> more generic <laughs> at least that's my interpretation of it and again i'm not a lawyer by any means but that seems to be at least what pierre thinks and what's also cool about it is you can either apply it exactly as written or you can innovate on it change it up to fit your gameplay and uh, Pierre says that he had to do that several times here. Uh, so I think in the sequel he's going to take more liberties with it. But in this one he's really trying to implement those rules in a turn-based uh, combat game. And, you know, your mileage may vary, but I think he's exceeded pretty well. Uh, okay, so let's get into the character creation. We're going to be creating uh, four characters here. And we're fairly limited in just Night Wizard Cleric. There's no Rogue, no Paladin. And dru <laughs> druids <laughs> so this shouldn't take too long and this is kind of interesting too so he's gone back this definitely feels like something from the uh, from the 90s or even from the 80s so instead of just the point by system you're probably familiar with uh, here we can roll characters and what basically what happens you can select the worst roll here and try to re-roll it and then you can also swap a couple of abilities around so that makes it a little bit more versatile, a little more flexible. Of course, you can just keep hitting uh, reset and just hope that you get uh, some high rolls. I guess if you're good with math, you could add this up and figure, you know, try to get a, a high score across the board. 
Uh, basically what I did, I tried to get at least one or uh, two high scores. There's 18. And these other scores, though, look pretty crappy. So remember, I only get to roll one, so I'm going to be stuck with a lot of uh, 12s. I just keep uh, rolling here. <laughs> to, like, basically get basically what I want for this night. And then we will uh, maybe do a little... Uh, a little fuss, fussing with it a little bit, maybe. So I want to try to get at least a 16 for strength. There we go, 16 for strength, but the constitution <laughs> is deplorable. Could swap it out for that 15. So let me just show you what I'm talking about here. So like this 8, I could re-roll this. Oh, I got a 16, so that's pretty cool. So this is a fighter, so I'd rather have 18 for strength, but 16's not bad. Uh, Dexterity's not bad either, but I think I'll swap the... He doesn't need to be that smart. <laughs> you know, even though I always think this is terrible with D&D, they always make out like the fighters don't need intelligence. Like it's all about brute, brute strength. Where if you, you know, if you talk to some of these, uh, like a martial artist, they're some of the smartest guys I've ever met. I mean, super smart. And there's a lot of science behind uh, martial arts, obviously. <laughs> I can just imagine, like... Uh, swords play, sword play and fencing. There's probably even more intelligence required for that. Okay, let's see. Feats. Let's see, am I skipping something here? Yeah, okay. Yeah, I, did, I skipped the race part. I'm just kind of going with it. The, the flashy colors distracted me. So I don't know what the heck a mole is. But you notice we can right-click on something and figure it out. So let's see. Moles, mules. A tough cross breed of dwarves and humans. So that's pretty cool. You, know, you always see half elves in these games. What about a half dwarf? <laughs> Thanks, Pierre. <laughs> we got a half dwarf. Uh, but instead of calling it something stupid like half dwarf, uh, we got, well, mul <laughs> mulls. Not sure how that happened. Combine the strength and powerful constitution of the dwarven parent. With the cutting and height of the human parent. It's the world's tallest dwarf. They have stern facial features and are always and are always male. Okay. <laughs> uh, so I guess these mules, maybe that's why he's calling them moles, kinda like a mule. I guess they can't read because <laughs> Are there female mules? Well now I'm just really confused. Oh Pierre, what what's going on here? Uh, Mill Warrior. So what does this amount to? You know, you gotta hand it to... I mean, look at the... I mean, you got page after page after page of this kind of stuff. And you know, we can even get in here and right-click. So this is one thing that's definitely not like those old shareware games or those disc magazines. You know, typically, you, you wouldn't know what the heck you were doing. Uh, they wouldn't put this much explanation here. But it's quickly... You can really quickly get into the back end of this game and get into where... How he's laid all this out. It's a very logical system. Uh, let's see, so you automatically gain the toughness feat at level 1, which I think that's 3 hit points. Which doesn't sound like a lot, but I guess it adds up in this. So here's the crux of it. So, I wonder why you only get that at level 1. It'd be a lot cooler if you got that every, every level. Or at least every time you could uh, pick a feat. Let's see, so you take a, you get plus two for your strength, but you lose two on your decks. So, I don't know, usually those things kind of wash out to me. But I think I might actually go with it for this first night, because it brings the strength up to 18, which I like that. And I don't think dexterity is necessarily all that important uh, for our warrior, because I really want him in some big, thick plate armor. Uh, let's see, male and female. Oh, they're always male. I forgot. <laughs> Sorry, lady. Lady Mulls. <laughs> uh, then we could pick a color for him. So that's what he's going to look like. There's not a lot of variation in terms of uh, the character sprites. They don't change. This is one thing that sucks about this game. No matter what the weapon is, whether he's got a shield or not, he's always just stuck with the same look. I mean, even the old gold box games will let you pick... Pick your icons with a little bit. There was more choices in those games. So that, that is a letdown. Even for an indie game, I mean, come on. You know, spend a... <laughs> you know, pay somebody a hundred bucks to create a bunch of icons for you. 
Uh, let's see. Pick a feet. Yeah, and you'll see a lot of these are straight out of that uh, D and D 3.5 or whatever it is. Now, what I really like about this is up here. I feel like I'm on a first name basis with the guy. <laughs> That's how much of his personality is in this game. I feel like I know the dude, even though I've only seen like a, a weird sort of video with him. Uh, anyway, he tells you like, here's what you should pick: cleave and weapon focus, long sword. And what I like about this is that, you know, a lot of times you're playing a game like this, you don't know what to expect, you never played it before. You know, some sometimes you play these games and you pick something like, uh, oh, I don't know, like a, maybe you really had this vision of yourself with a light flail, but you never find any decent light flails in the game, so you're kind of, you know, <laughs> stuck with a useless weapon focus. Uh, but here he's kind of telling you, hint, hint, you know, you'll probably find some long swords. So we can again right click on this. If you don't know what that is, you probably do from D&D, &D, but you might want to see just, you know, if there's any sort of special way he's implemented it. So weapon focus long sword, prerequisite a base attack bonus of plus one. So basically you won't miss as much. So if you roll, you know, if he's got a AC of 15, you roll a 14, well, you got this plus one. Uh, to help you out there. So that, that's, again, doesn't sound like a lot, but in the grand scheme of things, that might make <laughs> all the difference. Uh, and then, of course, good old Cleave. You know, this is if you want to play a little Legend, or what is it, uh, you know, the Grimoire. What's the other part of that? Heralds of the Winged <laughs> Exemplar. <laughs> yeah, the Great Cleave. That's uh, who that's referring to. Uh, no, nah, really, this is just if you're up against a lot of low-level creatures. Again, it, it's, it's actually really powerful, because whenever... It's usually the warrior that's killing people, right? Uh, so if you kill somebody, he automatically can reach over there and attack somebody else. And then if you get the Great Cleave, that gives you two of those to work with, so... Uh, very cool. But, you know what else is really cool here is the improved initiative. So just like the D&D, you've got certain creatures that get to go first. And this uh, improved initiative, I like this because it gives you a plus four to that check. So you probably want, usually in my experience in a game like this, uh, getting, to, getting to go first can make all the difference in the world. Uh, especially if you're up against mages. And, you know, if you can kill that mage or get up close to that mage before they can start casting their fireballs. <laughs> uh, that could be literally be a game saver. So I'm really looking tight at that one. Uh, otherwise... You know, you could just pick whatever weapon you want. I think I'll go ahead and stick with his uh, choices here, though. Weapon focus and cleave. Definitely want the cleave. I might get that improved initiative uh, next time. Let's see, what is dodge? I'm always kind of confused about dodge. Uh, so this is helpful. He tells you it's a prereq. If you want these other feats, mobility, spring attack, and... Whirlwind attack, which, you know, that's kind of an AoE, basically. Uh, attacks multiple targets. See, the dodge feat increases your armor class by giving you a dodge bonus of plus one. Note that you lose your dodge bonuses in the following circumstances. Blind, flat-footed, grappling, stunned, cowering, or attacked. I was, what I'm wondering is, you know, if he's going to be in plate armor, if this is just going to get canceled out. Because usually the, uh, the armor will have penalties... Let's see if it says anything there. So your AC is equal to the following. Armor bonus plus shield bonus plus dexterity modifier plus size modifier. Note that armor limits your dexterity bonus. So if you're wearing armor, you might not be able to apply your whole dexterity bonus. All right. Dodge bonuses. Some other AC bonuses represent actively avoiding blows. These bonuses are called dodge bonus. Any situation that denies you your dexterity bonus also denies your dodge bonus. Let's see. Wearing armor, however, does not limit these bonuses the way it limits a dexterity bonus to AC. What does that mean? <laughs> now I'm even more confused. <laughs> okay, so any that denies you your dexterity bonus also denies you your dodge bonus. So what does that mean? Does that... Does that mean I should take this dodge feat, even though I'll be wearing armor? <laughs> you know, I don't know. Let's just uh, go with the 
Uh, the uh, the long sword. I kind of imagine this guy's a tank anyway. He's he takes the blows. Oh, I forgot to change his name. So you can either input your own names or just use the ones that he comes up with here. I don't know how. I, I don't know if he just typed in a whole bunch of names. They're pretty pretty decent names. All right, so we got our first character. So you got to be thinking about the party you want. How many knights do you want? Uh, these are your basically fighter types, bodyguards, criminal enforcers, and champions. You know, I totally skipped over the alignment, too. I think my other party was just all lawful good. I don't... I don't know if this makes any real difference in this game. But you do have all the usual alignments. Chaotic good. Chaotic good is the best alignment you can be because it combines a good heart with a free spirit. So he kind of goes through each one of these. True neutral. Neutral is the best alignment you can be because it means you act naturally without prejudice or compulsion. Hmm. All you gotta do is act naturally. Chaotic neutral. So again, I'm not sure this even makes any difference. Maybe I'll just kind of randomly pick them. Yeah, I don't see any evil options. <laughs> I guess Beard doesn't want to make that kind of game. All right, anyway, I went with two knights, a wizard, and a cleric in my last game. Or my main game here. Uh, I'm not sure what would be the advantage if you want to have two clerics. Inferior to the knight. So the cleric in this is kind of an in-between. You might almost think of him as a, or her as a fighter slash magic user. A wizard. You probably don't want two wizards. That might be kind of hard to manage. Uh, I really can't think of anything better than the two knights. I don't really like the idea of having two clerics. So I'm just going to stick to my norm here make another knight. Again, let's see if we can get a, a full on. There's a 17. So that's not bad. We could try to re-roll one of these and see if we can... Okay, now we're talking. So if I swap this... Uh... There we go. That's a pretty good score. Let's see if these do anything. Yeah, so wisdom is good to have because it gives you some uh, resistance. Let's see about intelligence. What is that? Kind of saving throws. Spells harder to resist. Let's see, does it do anything for a warrior though to have? Uh... Oh, a knight also needs an intelligence of at least 13 to get the feet whirlwind attack. That's something to think about. That's intelligence of 13 would prevent him from ever getting that. Uh, of course, you can erase it later on if that's a big deal. Let's go ahead and make him a uh, neutral good. You know, let make a, let's make a female. Dian, Dianitza. All right, pick a feet. All right, I'm not going to go through all this again, obviously. Oh, this is another one that's pretty cool, to forge weapons and armor. Uh, so this is kind of strange. It costs you some gold and also experience points. So experience points aren't that hard to get. You could there's a lot of random encounters you can go out and grind for that if you want. Uh, so we could just make him make her pretty much like the other dude we got, or we can try a little something different. You know, maybe I'll the cleave is just too too damn useful not to have. Oh, notice that she gets, as a, I guess as a human, you get three feats. That's pretty nice. Now, I wonder if there's any reason to pick a half-elf. I think they're probably better for the, uh... You know, I wonder why he didn't come up with his own name for a half-elf. So, Bastard Swords, Dwarven War Axe. You could get proficiency in those, but again, makes it so you won't miss as much. So, let's see. We already got a longsword on the other person. Probably don't want two longsword experts. You know, one thing I could do, I didn't really think about this. I might want to go back and adjust it. I think you could make a ranged fighter. Because there are plenty of bows. You know, I don't know how far you could take that. <clears throat> There's quite a few feats associated with archers. You know, let's do that. Let's just have a... Let's see if we can make a... Uh, an archer. 
And you know, the, the funny thing is that there's certain bows you could find where it uses your strength instead of your dexterity. So I'm just going to... I'm just going to reset this and try to see if I can... Yeah, there's a dexterity of 17. Let's see if we can make a warrior with a high dexterity instead of strength and see how that works out. I don't want too low of a strength, though. All right, let's see. Well, that 13 constitution's kind of bugging me. Maybe swap that out. It's pretty low strength for a typical warrior, but again, thinking kind of as a, a ranger. Okay, so we'll pick some kind of uh, ranged attack. Let's see, point blank shot, uh, precise shot, improved precise shot. Uh, improves your attack roll and damage roll when shooting at a target no further than 15 feet. So that's probably a pretty common scenario. Let's go ahead and pick that. And let's see, what else? Precise shot. <clears throat> you avoid the negative four penalty on attack rolls when shooting at a target involved in melee fight. Again, a very, <laughs> very useful feat for an archer. And then let's uh, figure out what we want for a weapon. <clears throat> <coughs> Probably a longbow. Yeah, there's our weapon focus longbow. Yeah, let's see what happens. We move to a half elf. <coughs> we lose some strength. What do we get in return? Wow, you lose two strength, two constitution, you get two int and two dex. So that does push our dexterity all the way up to 19. Get smarter too. You know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. I'm gonna keep this character, even though that strength is horrible. I just, <laughs> I, I kind of liking this. Oh, it reset my feet, so that sucks. No, no, I want my feet. <laughs> Gotta have that feet. All right, I'll just put these back in again. I'm sorry to all the half elves out there. Nice royal purple for her. Agrippine. Agrippine? Alright. Got our two got our knights, swore big tough guy. Got our ranger. Ranger lady. She's gonna be cool. Now let's see. Yukath. Let's do a cleric next. So the cleric will want some good wisdom, obviously. And I don't think any of these give you wisdom. I wonder if intelligence does anything at all for a uh, cleric. I didn't say so. Let's see what it says here for clerics. <clears throat> <clears throat> see, base attack bonus. They're inferior to the knights. What do they do for you? Hmm. A cleric knows a number of spells equal to three plus his wisdom modifier. Turn undead. I don't see anything there about intelligence being necessary. So let's just look. Go for the highest wisdom score. Where's it? Oh wow! So, I like those two seventeens. You got some sucky rolls in there though. Let's see. Yeah. So the cleric also uses charisma for his turn undead. <clears throat> what is that about Medusa? The difficulty class of a Medusa Gaze attack also depends on the Charisma modifier. Okay, so it's not necessarily a deal breaker, but... Ah, you know, we could swap it out, maybe. You know, this is just not very impressive. We got those two 17s, but I think we can do a little better. I think I want my Cleric to be nice and strong with a good constitution. I'm actually, I think this is pretty good here. So let's re-roll the lowest one. Oh, <laughs> that didn't help. Uh, so we're kind of stuck with this crappy charisma score. I'd like to that to be a little bit higher, but on the other hand, we get nice strength and nice con, and the wisdom is eh. I don't know. Hmm. Let's just see about this. Three plus, knows a number of spells equal to three plus the wisdom modifier. 
So we have to go in here and see. And again, like <clears throat> those other D&D &D games we were talking about, uh, it's the even numbers. So you get to 18, you get a plus 4, so that'd be 4 spells instead of 3. So this is... You know, this this needs to be 18, really. That gives me a whole extra spell. You know, I think it's going to be worth uh, getting an 18. <laughs> and there we go. <laughs> so there's our 18 wisdom, but now we're stuck with really crappy rolls for everything else. Let's see if we get lucky here. Nope. I just can't go with this. Oh, come on, come on, come on. Let's see if I can get an 18 on that wisdom. Oh, keep on rolling. Now, the problem is if I get an 18, I might click past it, so you have to be really careful. Oh, that's close. But remember, it's got to be 18 or I don't get my, my point. All right, there's an 18 I could swap. Ah, this is getting frustrating. Ah, the... You know, about this time is when you start telling yourself, you know, but it's more fun to play with weaker characters. <laughs> Get into the role play. All right, I think I might have to resort to that. I just cannot seem to get an 18 there. Maybe I'll get lucky there. Nope. You know, damn it, I'm going to have an 18 wisdom if I have to stay here all day. <laughs> come on, come on, come on, come on. Give me that 18. Give, oh, give me that 18, baby. Come on. Goodness. What are the odds? There's a 17. Let's see if... Ah. There we go. Hallelujah. 18 wisdom. Of course, everything else here is kind of stinky. Ah, even worse. Ah, this is killing me. The 12 constitution. Ugh. You know, I might have to go with this just because I don't want to spend all day on this, but that is terrible. I got this 15 I could swap out for something. I guess I'll swap this out for my uh, constitution, I guess. You know, dead cleric doesn't help anybody. And there are some spells and things you can get that'll boost my strength up, so there, there is that. Alright, man. I want to get two feats. I guess that's... I wonder if that's tied into intelligence. Does this determine how many feats you get? Oh, wow, look at all these spells I get to pick, though. That's cool. Ah, let's see. First feat. So we know his strength is pretty low. I don't guess there's going to be anything that'll help with that. Scribe scroll. That's a good one. So if you find scrolls, you can add that to your spell repertoire. And what else? Oh, this is kind of interesting about this this game. Is the There's actually quite a bit of uh, use... I think the wizard's the only one that can do it, but you can create wands and scrolls. Normally that's kind of, eh, who cares, but in this game it actually does make a difference because there's, there's a lot of spots where you won't be able to camp out, you won't be able to replenish your hit points. So having those potions and scrolls and things... Did I say potions? Now, having those scrolls and wands uh, makes a bigger difference than it would in most games. Uh, and the concentration, I think, is just about essential. Uh, this is, you know, sometimes you get distracted, you mess up your spell. Normally not a big deal in lots of games, but in this one it definitely is a big deal. I mean, I seem like I miscast about half the time if I didn't have that. <clears throat> if you've got an enemy up close to you and they do a little damage to you, suddenly you're not casting your spell. <clears throat> do I want to cure light spell? We... Oh, the summon! The summons are awesome. Yeah, this uh, summon a fire elemental. And they even get tougher as you level up. The creature's hit dice is equal to the caster's level. Uh, so the, I found these things just insanely useful. I, mean, I love the... Uh, I mean, you know, look at the detail here. He's even got the, all this meta magic stuff built in. So you could take a feat to make it 
where you can cast this even if you're uh, uh, let's see even if you're grappled or paralyzed uh, which is definitely a thing you can still cast or if you've been silenced you can still cast it so that that's pretty cool that he's got these uh, meta magic feats in there probably won't need them right away but gonna be useful and you got all these different kinds of elementals and you can read about what they do this one's got a slam attack I think the uh, is it the water elemental one of these can make yeah bleed successful slam attack inflicts bleeding conditions so kind of a little damage over time let's see what else we got here light I didn't see any use for this any magical darkness and the illuminating condition condition which increases line of sight in poorly lit areas it lasts until rest so I didn't ever really use that but maybe it's maybe I should have could be useful let's see it's recommending divine favor uh, deity's power to gain a luck bonus to attack rolls damage rolls and all saving throws last for seven rounds which that's that's, that's decent so let's see, what does it do? Luck bonus to attack roll, damage roll, and all saving throws. Bonus is plus one below level six. So it'll be a while before this gets better, but it's already pretty good. I mean, that's a plus one, makes it more likely to hit, and if you do hit, you do more damage. Lasts a good long time. Go ahead and pick it. <laughs> magic stone and bane. Let's see what magic stone... Uh, this spell enchants three small pebbles, which you immediately hurl up to three opponents. Each pebble deals 1d6 points of bludgeoning damage, or double that if it's undead. Each throw requires a successful ranged touch attack. Now, I think this is where I might get into trouble with this one. Attack roll, either ranged or melee. So, it's <laughs> I'm probably going to be missing with these, since my... Uh, Strength and dex are fairly low. I guess you could either, if they're right next to you, I guess you could just kind of hit them with a rock. If they're a long ways off, you throw it at them. You know, it might be. I got plenty of uh, spells to, to play with here. I might just get that to try it out. Let's see. Shield of Faith. Touch creature gains a plus two deflection bonus. That's cool. So it'll be harder to hit. And it does get better over time. Duration four rounds per level. So probably not all that. I guess that would probably last through most battles. Let's see, did I take Bless already? Yeah, I guess I took that. Let's see what Bane does. Enemies in the area of effect are filled with fear. They receive a penalty of negative one to both attack rolls and willpower saving throws. So I guess if you're really smart, you'd cast this and then you cast another spell that has something to do with uh, willpower make them easier to, to hit with whatever that spell was I go ahead and pick it kind of tempted to grab another elemental but <laughs> remove shakes <laughs> go away shakes all right so that looks pretty good not my favorite character <laughs> what can you do <clears throat> all right let's make a wizard I kind of like that you can change the color. We can make her uh, make him evil robes. Is it red for neutral? Okay, obviously we must have an intelligence of 18. <clears throat> I guess you don't have to have that, but I really want it. If I get any 18s, I could swap it in. You know, at some point you gotta say, look, just let me put in the damn scores. You know, the point by system, there's a reason everybody likes that. I guess he really wants you to, to play with those lower scores. 17? No, it's got to be 18. Man, I can't seem to get... There's one 18 in Dex I could roll in. So let's see if I did that. Woo, I got some low rolls here. So the Dex... I used to like to have a higher Dexterity than this on a Mage. Just so they could dodge more. You can't really wear armor, so this is just a real stinker, having a low uh, dex. I don't really need strength at all. You know, I'm just going to have to reset that. Uh, let's see, 15. If I can get a couple of 18s to play with. I 
Come on. <laughs> Two hours later. <laughs> There's an 18. Like... Alright, let's try this. Oh, crap. Messed it up. <laughs> well, sorry. <laughs> Back to this. <laughs> you gotta be careful when you get those 18s. Those are precious. Oh, I see one. My eyes are starting to go. Come on. There we go. Okay, let's try to put that there and re-roll the lowest. Well, we have to re-roll the decks. And eh, stinking 12. You know what I want here? I want a high constitution. Ooh, that's a nice con. But a decent dexterity. Maybe I should roll first. There we go. Oh, I'm still stuck with the... I have a 13 constitution or 13... So that's a very low con. I like the 18 decks. Uh, that'll let him dodge. Let's see if I switch into... Whoa, I get 20. Lower strength, higher dex. Oh, the con is even worse, though. I, mean, I think I'm going to have to go with this. Alright, let's see. Definitely dodge. No question there. I don't see anything else that's going to keep him from taking hits is what I want. What does mobility do? <clears throat> a dodge bonus of plus four whenever you trigger an area of attack by moving away from an opponent. So that might be good. If you want to scoot back. I think I could probably do a little better. I think improved initiative would be worth having because, again, it's so, it's so great if you can get that spell out before anybody else gets to move. <laughs> Not going to do cleave. Let's get into these. Uh... Oh, wait, did I... Oh, it somehow it switched away from uh, Wizard. Alright, let's see. Spell focus, superior concentration, I think, again, where you want to go. Then we got all these wonderful spells. Entangle's a good one. Sleep. The old classics are here, of course. Magic Missile. Where would we be without the Magic Missile? What else do we have? There's the cause shaking. I'm not sure what this business is with the reduced weapons. What, what is that? This is not a combat spell. Reduced weapon decreases the size of weapon or armor by one step. I'll get the permanent. I don't quite understand what the point of that is. Note that player characters can only wield medium sized weapons. I don't know, eventually you start finding giant weapons. A <laughs> reduced person. This sounds cool, but if you look at it, it saps their strength, but it also makes them harder to hit. So it's not, you know, a perfect uh, curse. It seems ray of necromantic energy reduces the target's strength by 1d6. You know, I probably would never use that. Mage armor. That lasts all. That lasts until you rest. It's pretty cool. Let's see. Yeah, I guess I'll try this. Yeah, maybe I'll get this ray of frost. That way, I got all my elements covered. You could just pick male or female. Let's go. You know, have two two males, two females in the party. Sounds good. All right. <clears throat> now these should these characters should be lined up nicely. Oh. Let's make sure they're all different colors. So I got a green, a purple, a blue, and a red character. <laughs> Normal. And yeah, somebody probably wants to play on Iron Man mode, but not me. All right, here we go. Now we are in the game. All right, and we have Commander Commander Kariff here. Commander Kariff addresses you. Brave knights. I thank you for answering my call so quickly. I need you to conduct an investigation. There's some gargoyles. Nah, <laughs> wrong game. <laughs> Our agent in Corinth, Constello. Looks like I should be able to click on that. Constello has ceased to answer my messages. You must find out why. Go to Corinth, 
find out what is happening, and resolve the problem. I'm afraid I cannot help you more, as I have other matters to attend to. You are on your own in this mission. Good luck! <laughs> Good luck! <laughs> so there's Lord British, uh, I mean, uh, Commander Carif. Now, another thing he says in his design book, you know, you look at this thing, you're like, oh my god, it's Ultima 7. Where's the oven? I want to milk some cows. I want to change some diapers, you know. Unfortunately, you can't click on Jack. <laughs> Nothing. Uh, you can click on him and roll your mouse wheel to switch between, uh, you know, looking at him. Tariff has gray hair and a stern look on his face. His voice has a ring of authority. Let's see, back to game. Or you could try talking again. Let's see, please go and find out what has happened to Costello. You may also wish to visit the caves to the southwest to practice your combat skills. Oh yeah, you're definitely going to be wanting to do that. Uh, but anyway, you can't interact with anything. You know, you can't even look at stuff. So again, you might think, oh, that's lame. But I mean, again, it's just one guy. He's, he's trying to... He doesn't want to take 50 years to make a game, and you know, really, it's really, do I need a description of every damn thing? You know, can't you just look at it? Uh, let's see, this heavy metallic door is locked. You will need the key to enter. You know, it's what's funny if you notice a lot of these these games, especially the indie ones. Usually at the first few levels, you know, there'll be these long, beefy descriptions of everything. <laughs> you know, like here is this heavy metallic door. Blah, blah, blah. It's Chris Avalon. We'd know what it sounded like, what it felt like. <laughs> There'd be some little initials in the corner. <laughs> uh, then as you get later in the game, it's just like, a door. It's a door, dummy. It's a... <laughs> you know, they get tired of typing in all that text, I guess. All right, let's just kind of look around. We got a... Let's see. Tink Tinkets. A dwarf knight. A.K.A. Dwight. Welcome, friends. I'm Tinkets, the Quartermaster. I can sell you weapons and armor. Are you interested? Nice, uh, nice artwork there. <laughs> Looks like a dwarf knight. <laughs> a dwarf blacksmith. Who would have thunk it? Let's see, can I have the storeroom key? Yeah, why don't you just ask for the storeroom key? That's what you typically ask. <laughs> can I have the storeroom key? <laughs> uh, the key to the storeroom. I'm not supposed to give it to you, but I can make an exception if you bring me back the silver ring. I lost it during a raid in the cave southwest of here. It has no material value, only sentimental, only sentimental value. Sentimental. Pretty sure that means sentimental. <laughs> <clears throat> You know, it's generally been pretty good. I haven't noticed any apostrophe or spelling errors. Just I didn't even notice that one the first time I played, so that was pretty subtle. Anyway, let's look at these, see what he can do for us here. So a very, very basic inventory system. I don't think there's... Maybe I'm wrong about this, but I don't think you ever get an expansion to this. Uh, there's no weight considerations, just number of items. Uh, so this, this fills up quick, so you don't want to get a bunch of junk in there. And I don't know if he'll let you get rid of quest items or not. You can destroy items. Hopefully that would not let you destroy your quest item. But you kind of, you know, it is kind of old school. You know, a lot of those old games, you could easily do that. Screw up your game being able to, to finish. All right, so we got 144 gold in our party. Already got some basic gear. Uh, we could upgrade to a Masterwork Chain shirt. A short made of metal rings protecting the torso. So you can see it's light armor. So anybody should be able to wear that. AC is 15 already. Does give me a breakdown there. Armor worn plus 4. Dexterity modifier of 1. And if you look at this, it's armor penalty of 4. And a max dexterity bonus of 3. So I'm well within my dexterity bonus, not to worry about that. So do you want this shirt? You'd have to sell a bunch of items. 
I mean, really, I don't think I'm in a position to buy anything. I'm glad that uh, we already had some arrows. Maybe I'll go ahead and buy some more arrows for our archer. Yeah, that's weird. It's letting me buy more arrows, even though it's not showing. Oh, okay. <laughs> I have to hover over it. <laughs> I think 140 arrows are enough for now. Okay. So there's a couple different ways to move. You can uh, do like I'm doing, just click. Or you can use the numeric keypad. That's exciting. If you use the arrow keys, though, you're just zooming around. And WASD, I don't think, does anything. That is a little lady. A guard. Let's see if we can talk to her. Doesn't spell out who has quests for you. Brothers, how may I help you? <laughs> can you open the locked door? You want to steal from our boss. Please talk to Tinkets. Do you know the people here? Sheriff is the commander in chief. He is above everyone. So that's really about it for dialogue. A resting place for you on the floor just below us. <laughs> Thank you, I've got to go. So I love that. There's not a whole lot of reading to do. The guy's not trying to write. Not trying to pack a bunch of novels into this. It's just pretty basic stuff. You go find Constello. That's up and down, obviously. Let's see what's over here. Friends, there's a place for you to rest in the northeast room. You can also buy spells from Chorus. Chorus in the southwest room. You gotta be careful in here, because they try to make you fight these elementals, and they will kick your butt. Matter of fact, I'm going to go ahead and save us while I'm thinking about it. <laughs> I don't know if they make you fight the elementals right off. Shania. Half-elf wizard. Shania is the half-elf apprentice of Chorus. She is young, well-mannered, and extremely, extremely intelligent. <laughs> Whoa, 27. <laughs> they aren't kidding. I bet she watches Matt Chat. The attractive half-elf wizard addresses you in a voice charged with exotic accents. Charged with exotic accents, son. Hmm. Nice to meet you. I am Shania, apprentice to Master Sorcerer Chorus, and I am extremely intelligent. <laughs> nice to meet you. <laughs> I am an expert in secret codes and languages. If you ever come across one such message, and you have difficulties deciphering it, be sure to come and see me. All right, no elementals yet. That's a good thing. Oh, is that thing turning? Is this phantogram turning, or am I just... It's turning, okay. <laughs> Man, I, can... I think I'm having troubles with my mind. See, the wizard speaks in a soft voice. Welcome, dear friends. I am Chorus, at your service. However... Presently, I have a service to ask of you. Continue. <laughs> See, this again, if this were certain games, it'd be like 50 options here. No, just continue. Shitty and my apprentice must practice the art of summoning... Oh, here we go. Hate this. I hate this part. The summoning creatures. I will be busy focusing on her. So could you get rid of whatever creatures she summons? You know, we can try this. We're probably just going to get our butt stomped. Do you know we say? We could try it. Sure. Good. Then we shall start the summoning right now. You know, somehow I don't think this is uh, OSHA approved. The two wizards begin intoning magic words. Three freaking water elementals. You hear a rumbling sound. Quirrus, you should not toy with us. One day you will pay. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna pay right now. I got the three ele water elementals. Ah! Oh, of course they do. All right. See, the improved initiative though kicking in here. I already get to get to go first, so I really have to make the most of it. And this is where you really see the detail. We got the five foot move. 
which we could use this. It'll eat up all my actions, but it will let me get out of uh, melee range without triggering that attack of opportunity. We could charge, which is, you know, you're looking around for a plug-in for your uh, iPhone there. Probably not useful here. Uh, attack, plus a move, standard action. So again, very D&D-like. It's pretty much uh, what you'd expect. A bull rush. I think that pushes them ahead. I've never really used this. Push an opponent by five feet. So we can. And yeah, we got our rolls there. It's nice. So if I select something and hover over, it'll tell me what the chances are. So 47% chance I could bull rush. I guess pushing forward. I could try to grapple, which grappling, everything seems to want to grapple you in this game. And if you get grappled, that really is a bad thing. Now, I'm not sure, I think flat-footed means that they don't get to uh, mess with me when I'm casting my spell. Kind of caught them by surprise. All right, Ray of Frost. I don't know how well this stuff would work on elementals. Now, I wonder if I could entangle them. It's not giving me any percentages, and it looks like I want to entangle my own people. <laughs> yeah, there's no way to, you know, cast that area spell. Let's see what else I could do. Maybe just a ray of frost or burning hands. So that'll do a whopping two points of damage. They got five hit points. So let's see if these other ones. The Shocking Grass, 65% chance. I just, I, I, I love all this detail, man. <laughs> Let's just see. Shocking Grass, how much damage would that do? The spell inflicts 1d6 points per caster level. Oh, so this again scales up, the more powerful I get, to a maximum of 6d6. So this could potentially knock him out with one, one spell. Just see what that other option is. Ray of Frost. So that'll do straight up five points of damage to him. And I got a 60% chance with meleeing. My luck being what it is, I'm I've actually seen this son of a gun be 95% chance of hitting and miss repeatedly. You know, that, that always seems to happen to me. I'm gonna try it. Come on, come on, come on. Boom! Ha <laughs> ha! Seven points of damage. <laughs> He's out cold. <laughs> Got it. Oh, and I get the move too, so I'm gonna go ahead and scooch him right over there. Let's see. View the initiative again, or space to end the turn. Alright, so that was pretty cool. Took one out. You see what I'm talking about? This initiative. Way more important than you might think. So I got a 40% chance I'm going to probably miss with this cleric. Let's see what kind of spells we got. We could summon our own elemental. Uh, we got the shield of faith. We got divine favor. We could try to... Got these magic stones. What did that do again? 1d6 of damage. Three times. You know what the heck. Let's try it. 55% chance. Boom! Oh, that one's got seven points. I wonder why this one must be the boss, I guess. You know, I think the fact they're flat-footed, maybe that's working to my favor. But anyway, did you see that? That cleric took him out just by throwing his magic stones. I'm very impressed with uh, this cleric. You know, I didn't think that was going to be all that great, but... Can't argue with that. Okay. Now we got our... You know, I, I think since they're flat-footed, that probably means... That's probably why I get to go first. <laughs> Nothing to do with my <laughs> initiative feat. Alright, so I don't see anything else to do here, really, other than just attack. Yeah, this is my sword-wielding one. Yeah, I think I can... Conditions. Reduce speed, armor, restricted bonus. Everything's laid out nice and clearly. Whoa, 14 points of damage. Man, I don't know why that battle has given me such a hard time before. 
For defeating the wild elementals, each party member gains an additional 150 experience points. Awesome. And 300 gold. Many thanks for your help against the elementals. Here, take this 300 gold as a reward. Now maybe you'd be interested in buying wines or scrolls. Yeah, that sort of thing happens to me every time I go into the comic book store. <laughs> you're like, fight these elementals we're going to summon. And then we'll let you browse our, our wares. Yeah, show me the stock. So this is a good way to learn some new spells. Instead of having to use your precious, uh, you know, the spells you get when you level up. You can just buy a few. <laughs> yeah, it's only 5,800 gold. <laughs> no problem. Cure moderate wounds. Uh, I'm thinking this healing wand, I don't know if I want to buy it now, but I think that's pretty much essential to have some wands like this. Because again, you won't always be able to rest. You can't just rest anywhere. And being able to he heal yourself back up might make the difference between having to being able to continue and having to reload from you know, several save points back. But I'm just going to hold on to my cash for now. <laughs> just, I'm such a miser in these games, you know. I hate spending my cash. Go ahead and save this. Okay, and they said somewhere up here I can rest. I don't really need to rest yet. Ah, oh, this is a handsome man. Love the hair. He's kind of like Fabio, isn't he? Uh, you went to the dormitory. You see two knights playing dice by the beds. Mm, can't talk. Too busy playing dice. Young man raises you. <laughs> Look at this guy. <laughs> Hi, would you be interested in a game of dice? Oh, would you be interested in a game of dice? That sounds more like it. Uh, yes, sure, yeah. Uh, please explain how it works. We both roll two dice and count the total. If I score more than you, you pay me 50. If you score more, I'll pay you 50. If it's equal, we throw again. <laughs> Man, I have heard of some basic dice games. This is <laughs> pretty basic. <laughs> uh, so at least it sounds fair. Yeah, so uh, I don't... I guess you could sit here and reload, reload, reload. Uh, I'm just gonna skip for that and not even bother. Don't gamble, children. Gamblers always lose. Alright, so when we want to rest, I'll just do it here so you can see what it looks like. But Bada boom, bada bing, you got all your health back. I don't think I took any damage, but I did use some spells. So that means I get those uh, spells reactivated. And let's see, so we've been up and we're back down. Alright. I just pressed uh, M to bring up my auto map. It's a really nice auto map too, we can click if you uh, go to an area and click, you know your guys will find the path. As you make your way through the entrance hall, you are frozen in your tracks as shouting erupts all through the hall. Orc attack! Orc attack! And join the battle. <laughs> Sorry, this is a linear game, folks. There's no option to flee. Oh, they open up with an entangle. Now the initiative is going to become an issue. I fought battles before where they you had like three or four spellcasters just lob everything they got at you, wipe you out before you even get to move. And there are some hard encounters where you, you're you caught flat-footed no matter what you do, so you just have to survive it. Putting a good morale, that's... <laughs> a good thing you have a little help on this battle. But, you know, I love this game. It, you notice it didn't waste any time getting me into battle. You know, not a lot of build-up, not a lot of mumbo-jumbo, just boom. You got a big conflict. And this is... You could definitely lose the game here very easily. This is not a... Definitely not a hand... There's not even an easy mode. There's just normal 
and stupid hard. Now those are your options. All right, here's my wizard. He gets to move before the other people. Now one thing that, that I like too, you can delay your turn. So if you really don't like your positioning or you want them to come a little closer, you know, you got a little room to fidget there. You can see the path that he's taking before you commit to it. Let's see what we can do here. I'm going to see if I can scooch over here. And see what kind of spells I have. I might be able to put some to sleep, maybe. I don't feel like I'm in a very good position for the uh, burning hands. No, I can only reach one with that. Save it. Let's see if I can put some to s Oh, why can't I cast sleep? It's got a line through it. What does that mean? And, uh, cast time full. So I need my... I can't move and then cast that. It's kind of a disappointment. I can cast Entangle, but there's already an Entangle spell. I guess I could try to entangle these people that are kind of outside the range of it. Move around a little bit. I think... Yeah, let's cast it over here. That way we just have a... <laughs> Everybody's entangled. You know, I used to have a, a convertible car when I was in college. And having long hair, kind of curly hair. Uh, you know, they would make your hair just so tangled up like you wouldn't believe. You know, you'd practically rip half your he head off. <laughs> half your hair out trying to untangle it. <laughs> That's what I think about entangling. It'd be like that. <sighs> ah! Alright, which one is this? This is Ajax with a sword. Let's see, he's got a problem. But I think it's something kind of kind of cool I can do. I don't you know, I don't think I'll quite be able to do it. I was gonna say you can do a ready thing where if they get you attack when they get close to you, but it's gonna take all his movement just to get in front of that wizard. Yeah, ready versus approach. So when you get within range, that'll attack. You also have a ready versus spell, which is pretty neat. So you could uh if somebody casts a spell, that'll go back to you, and you can try to shoot them with an arrow or something to distract them from their spell. Now here is my... Wait, which one was my archer? One of these is an archer. Yeah, she's my archer. Okay, it would be kind of nice if I had a... Yeah, there we go. So I switch with a mouse key, I can switch it to this. A so 60% cover. So I guess it's that little bit of wall there, maybe? I don't... Might be this entangle spell, I don't know. But only a 60% chance to hit from here. You know, I could try to move, but I don't really have any good spots to move to. I guess I could move one spot closer. Still 60% cover. You know, this is one thing I really wish you could do is just hold down, like, the middle mouse button to move around, to move the window around. It's annoying that to use the arrow keys for to try to get to the edge of the screen. All right, let's just try this. Boom! Hit. Nice. And our poor old cleric down here. No really good place to move. Let's see if I can... Maybe do a bless spell. See, so, yeah, I did bless, right? Yeah, there we go. <laughs> it's like, did I not get bless? <laughs> Most basic cleric spell. Good morale. Wow, what happened to my the entangles? Already gone. Oh, boom! Five points of damage. Boo! Now you can, they can either knock you unconscious or just flat out kill you. And get knocked unconscious if you survive the battle. You can uh, just go camp, but if you're dead, then you, have, then you have more trouble. Not necessarily mean you need to reload, though I probably would. 95% chance. Alright, dead. There's plenty more where he came from, though. Oh, man. Oh, that's, that's a good thing. Never mind. <laughs> Look how many of these guards left and right. I kind of lost track of which are my guys and which are the guards. Okay, 70% cover. 
50%. Let's try the 70%. Not quite enough damage to kill. So they've already taken out my stupid wizard. That wasn't very cool. So I could charge in. I don't have a ranged weapon yet. He's almost sure to get dead if I go over there. You know, maybe I'll try my magic rocks again. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna summon my elemental. These, these are pretty uh, badass. Get my fire genie, genie there. And I guess, what has he got? A five foot move left? So I guess I could try to move somewhere. I don't know how many, how many of those do you get for battle though? say anything about a about limitations on it I guess we might as well use it yeah see the, so the, the elementals are controlled by the AI uh, but as far, they never do anything too stupid the AI is pretty good I would say in this game and I just hope that with archers all it takes is like one arrow he's only got 11 hit points left you know, I'd kind of like to get him into a position where he could use his cleave, but... You know, I think I don't know how I could do that without wasting my, uh... Action, though. Oh, I already killed my... He killed my elemental, but he still got in that little bit of burning damage. Yeah, all these people are covered. 60% cover. Where do I have to move to get a good shot? Try there. <clears throat> nope, still 60% cover. Miss. I don't know, this isn't looking too good. I'm gonna try to. S oh, I've used up all my spells. Okay. So I bet all he's got left is attacks. Let's move here and then do our ready approach. I hope these guards will step up to the plate. Boom! I got this, this cleric is awesome! You see that? Two, two attacks? He's doing better than my warriors! Unbelievable. Alright. Critical hit! That's what I like to see. Double damage. Goes our archer point blank. See, there's that feet kicking in. Ah, she's just not quite doing enough damage with that bow. Let's see what else can this guy do. I don't think I really got any more options. Kind of afraid to step out there, but I guess we'll have to. Seventy percent chance of hitting. Boom. Here comes that knoll. Oh, you got him. Ten points of damage. Jesus. Ah, what is this like this? Why is he always the leader? Man, he's hard to hit. Eleven points of damage. He's still up. Oh. Yeah, this is definitely not looking good. There goes that cleave. Boom, boom. It's just coming down to it. <laughs> Got two guys left. Neither one of them. She's at full strength. He's down to three. I got a... A cute little knoll here. Dog man. Looks like. What is this? Orc with only two health, but hard to hit. And she's not in range. I wonder how I do like a ready with a bow. Is that only going to kick in if they get close to me? Let's just see if I can get a shot. 55%. I'll take it. Miss. <laughs> of course it's a miss. <laughs> if there's any chance of missing, of course. Oh no, I think I'm... And she misses again. Oh god. Oh no. <laughs> Come on, hit. See, 
switches to her gun. Or, I mean, her whatever her melee weapon is, it's even worse. Oh, and they get attack of opportunities on me because I'm using a bow. And we're dead. Wow. So there you go. Completely wiped out. Monsters rejoice. That's the first big battle in the game, I tell you. I'll tell you what. I don't want to leave it there. <clears throat> Let's try again. One more time. And if I die again, then we'll switch to the save game. So you can see some of the later things. Orc attack. Yeah, we get it. <laughs> I think my wizard dying so early in the battle was the decisive thing there. Wasn't able to do jack for got like one stinking and tangle off where he's dead. So I want to be a lot more careful with him. And I'll go ahead and put major armor on. The trouble is I I don't have any ranged weapons yet, so. I really don't want him having to use his uh, dagger or whatever they gave him. It's like, boom, 11 points of damage. I think that was a pretty good move with the bless. Let's see, how long does this bless last? Four rounds? Still seems like a good choice. Got morale on everybody. And he's... I think it'd be better to have. I want them to come to me. Okay, he's my main fighter. Let's move him here and give him that old ready approach. Anybody tries to creep in there. And it stinks they put these guards so low on the initiative because they're all dying before they can help out. I guess if you really wanted to play around with the game, you could... There we go, one dead. You could just reload and or make sure they're in the right place before the battle starts. Okay, this is my archer. Yeah, this archery might not be the best choice, really. She almost hit my own dude. Friendly fire is another big deal. So that's... Bane just canceled out my bless. Oh, was that one of my people that died? <laughs> kind of losing track here. Okay. Now let's try to see if we can do this sleep. Oh, no real good position. I guess that's probably about the best spot. A couple of them are asleep. Wasn't that useful though. And they just woke him up. Anyway. You know, I guess I could try to cure some of these other people. Oh <laughs> my guard. The guard fell asleep. Great. Okay, let's see what he can cast. Elemental still should probably be about the best option. So we should get a little bit more range on the cast of that. Oh, it woke up the guard. Well, they had to waste a turn, waste their turns waking everybody up. I guess that's better than nothing. Give my guards a chance to do some damage. It's like they have cleave too. Okay, let's whack them. 80% chance. <clears throat> I wonder what bull rush. Just look at this quick. Allows you to push an opponent five feet. Uh, you win the target roll the post strength checks. If you succeed, you push the opponent back five feet. Bull rush action is most useful in conjunction with wall of fire or web. You could also use it to break a grapple between a monster and a friendly wizard. You know what I was wanting to know would it damage the one behind it? If I bull rushed it, but it doesn't look like it. So I'm just going to stick to the basic attack. Alright, got him. Here's my archer again. Alright, let's 
see if we can get her in a little bit better position. 75% chance. It's only got five hit points. Boom, dead. But things are looking a little bit better this time. I hate the fact these guards are just... Oh! Come on, leave that Kurt clerk. Oh, man. You know, one thing this game is just crazy about is targeting your freaking spellcasters, man. They just go straight for that wizard. I don't even know how they know it's a wizard. I'm almost tempted to pick a different icon. <laughs> or just pick a wizard, put him in plate armor, because you can do that even though it messes with their spells. But just because you know they're going to keep targeting that wizard or priest. Alright, so he's already out of spells and he's got no ranged weapons. So he's pretty much just uh, cannon fodder now. I don't want him to get... There's a chance he could die from those attacks, though, so... Let's just stick him over here and put him on ready. Yeah, that guy's <laughs> gonna go for him. Right through those attacks of... That's how bad he wants to kill your wizard. Right through the attacks of opportunity. Does not care. Alright, come on. Alright, killed him. Oh, leave that priest alone. Leave the mage alone. Alright. We might survive this. I'm feeling a little bit more confident. Let's see, he doesn't have anything to attack, though. But you know what? I'm pretty sure... I could either delay... Let's do a delay. Let's see if they kill one of these guards. You know, I don't know if moving in closer would make any difference, or it's actually better to be further apart. Didn't really say anything there. Moves 40, 40 feet. Sixty percent chance. <laughs> Almost hit my guy. <laughs> yeah, that's the worst. Is when not only do you miss, but you actually hit your own guy. I guess the worst would be missing and then critting on your own person. All right, this wizard's just. I guess we'll leave him there. He's got one hit point left. I guess I could kind of back him up in here. Same thing with this cleric, there's just not much to do. Got a feeling like they're just gonna get arrowed to death. You know, if I lose this, you see what happened there? He killed his own guy. Go ahead and move her up. 40%, 35. Ah, one point of damage. Man, there goes the priest. Yeah, I think I honestly think I'm gonna lose this again. It's a really tough battle this early in the game. I'm thinking of this. I'm starting to think this idea about being an archer is just, <laughs> just bad. <laughs> she can't hit anything. She's not doing any damage worth, worth the, worth thinking about. Goes the wizard. <sighs> These guards suck. Come on, hit something, lady. Why is she getting these crappy ass chance to hit? 55% chance just wide out in the open? Not even meleeing? Ugh. At least they didn't grapple him. Oh, that's a guard. Yeah, I think I think the lesson here, folks, is do not try to make an archer. <laughs> Cause that at least for me, it's just not working out. Look at that, three people left. We're toast. She can't, even when she hits, she does so little damage, it's not even worth the... Uh... Damn! You know, that's, this is uh, it's kind of hard on my ego that I can't get past this. I don't know, maybe we should, maybe we need to buy some stuff. Maybe there's a, you gotta do something to get a better edge than this. 
show me your wares. So he could get a magic longsword. Hmm. Can't afford that. He only sells these longbows that are too expensive to purchase. Well, let's see. 400 gold. How can we use that most effectively? Hmm. I wish I could afford the bow, because I got a feeling like that might be. Let's see, the scale males armor bonus of four. There's a chain shirt there. <laughs> yeah, buy that. It'd be better to have a little bit better sword or a better slightly better. Yeah, I guess I could maybe get some scrolls to heal myself more. Let's take a look at this. Let's go ahead and get this sword. Looks like the most expensive thing I can buy. That's... There's a great sword. Now I could get this from my archers so if they get past their defenses should have a better weapon. Oh, what is this? I don't have enough gold for anything. You know what? I'm just gonna... Usually a better weapon is the best choice. Okay, let's see how that affected me. <laughs> so I get one more point. Slightly better. Let's go ahead and sell the other sword. <laughs> Seven gold! 145, let's see if there's anything else I can buy. Man, I need every freaking edge. Enlarge weapon, reduce weapon, shocking grass, glitter dust, ghoul touch. Can't a There's a missile wand. That would be that would have been a really good thing for my uh, to give my mage when he runs out of spells. None of this other stuff really looks worth the money. There's a cure of moderate wounds. Uh. I'll tell you one thing I could do differently is uh, before I get up there and trigger that attack, I could go ahead and cast my mage armor. That'll help a little bit, and then we can... Let's see if our mage can cast any prep. Nope. Okay. <laughs> and then let's... Let's do like I was suggesting. And, yeah, kind gonna guide these. Try to get... Yeah, trigger it when they're in the right position. All right. All right, third time. I, I know I said I'd only do two, but I, I can't leave it like this. I've got to... Oh, my God. Look at that. Three attacks. You know, I'm sure a lot of people like me probably loaded this game, bought it, and couldn't get past this battle, died the first time, and like, ah, screw it, it's so poorly balanced. <laughs> the progression is all messed up. Let's see, Ajax. So, you know, if I get out in the middle of this, I could forget it. I know from experience, I'm almost certain to get entangled, but. Yeah. I guess you could still move a little bit through that, which is nice. He's out of attack, so... I guess that just makes it harder to hit anything. Now why would he grapple somebody? He's completely surrounded. The darkness. Well, there's the one use of where you could use that light spell, I guess. All right. Ah, 45% cover. Ah, hit. Just not, I'm not impressed with that damage, though. Three points of damage? You got a freaking arrow in the chest. All right, here's our mage. Hmm. 
Hmm. Could try to magic missile. I don't know how many missiles I've got, but I'll... I can only target one of them. I'm gonna have to move into this mess. Boom, entangled. a lot of good stuff here and I think I've only got the one spell left. I think it's probably better to try to wait and use that on my use that for a sleep spell. It's the only decent strategy I can think of. Okay, come on. Everybody's a little too spread out for that. Blessed be Let's see about this plus. What does it do again? Plus one morale bonus to both attack rolls and willpower saving throws. And the range is 50 feet, so that would get everybody. I can't think of anything better to do. I guess you. Usually they get one shot at, so uh, saving a cure spell doesn't seem all that smart. Okay, now if I could get him out where he could use his uh, cleave, that might help. Alright. That's a little better. Ah, I wish I hadn't killed that one so quick. I was just hoping my mage would get a chance to cast that sleep. Bane. Then again, cancel out my bless. I guess they're trying to get to my mage, provoking those attacks of opportunity. I'll take that. All right, let's see about her bow again. Everybody's covered, of course. Let's go with the one that has the best chance of hitting. Not enough to kill it. All right, here we go. Let's see what we can do with sleep this time. Ah, nowhere to cast it that wouldn't put my own people to sleep. Look at that. And if I move, I won't be able to cast it this turn. You know, just getting screwed. What else do I have here? I can try to entangle. There's a pretty nice. That would help a lot, I think. Let's try that. Maybe that'll keep being so good with their arrows. Fortunately, I don't think it lasts too long. And I'll stick him over there. Hopefully, that will make the miss. Or at least waste some movement. Alright, let's see. Get him in there. We got one more spell we can cast. We could do the magic stone again. Or I could wait and use it on my... to summon something. I think I'll summon my minion again. Don't think I can hit anybody. So I'm ready. Here's our... So he's 95% and flanked. So the flanking means there's somebody on the opposite end. So, yeah. Trust me, I've seen that 95% chance miss repeatedly. When it really mattered, too. Man, you see, this is... Uh, you gotta love the, the degree of tactics that you have to employ, even at this early, early stage. I'm curious at the cover. I wonder if that includes my, my own people. That says 27% cover grappling. 70% chance to hit. Now, come on. Alright, got one. All right, so he's out of spells now. I 
don't think I want to rush in with him. Just do the ready approach. I wish there was like a dodge. Alright, I think we might actually do it this time. Alright, now I'm going to summon my fire minion. Come on, come on. Boom! <laughs> there you go, get in there. Okay, let's see, where do I want this guy? Yeah, 70% charging. I kind of like 95%, oh, that's better. Nine, boom, dead. Oy, I didn't want him to die. <laughs> ah, God, this is going to be close again. Alright, let's see. 30% cover, too far away, no line of sight. 60% cover. So you see, there's a fairly good chance you hit my own people there. Uh, I'll go for it. Missed. <laughs> At least he hit his own guy and killed him. <laughs> okay, back to my mage, who's not really in a position to do anything useful. So I'll back him up over here. Hope he doesn't die. Oh, no. I feel victory slipping from my grasp. 40% charging. So I'll have to take those odds. Missed. <laughs> of course it missed. Poor old elemental only got one hit. Okay. 90% chance, but if I if I could just kill this son of a gun, I'll get my cleave. Alright, good. Boom. Cleave. Boom. Alright, I think <laughs> with the grace of God I might be able to do it this time. Let's see, where can we get her? Let's see. Ah, of course you missed. I don't know where that son of a gun thinks he's going. Go ahead and move him out. These guys are in the dark and there's... Oh, they're concealed. Well, I thought that would have a negative impact on him. I wonder how long that darkness lasts. Uh, boom. Ah! Oh. oh, no way! God, I missed him and then he turned around and whacked me for 14 points. It's probably got him down to like one hit point. One more hit and that guy's down. Come on! Of course, these enemies are getting critical hits left and right. Now, why should he only get a 35% chance of hitting? Alright, got that mole down. Was there just one left? <laughs> Alright! And I'm looking at a cold sweat here. Okay, keep your fingers crossed. This could be it. This could be it. If you'll just flip and hit. 65% <laughs> chance. It's over. Ah. Holy cow. <laughs> Woo! Victory! Oh, I got some nice rewards. A lot of XP, some coins. Parties defeated the orc raid. Each character gains 100 experience points for each surviving allied knight. So each, for each surviving knight. Which I think there might have been a couple. <laughs> Alright, oh my god. Unbelievable. So this is another irritant of the game. This system sucks. You got this loot, you can't just click on it. You have to like click, hold down, and then drag it to the person you want. It's kind of hard to tell where the 
arrow is. You can also drag it over here. Just go ahead and grab this all the loot and sort it out later. So unless there's some short bows in the mix, some better armor. We've got some shields. They won't let you, uh, your cleric, if the cleric uses a shield, that means they can't cast spells. You can, you can have a shield and put it on, I guess, when you run out of spells if you really want to. Okay, let's see what we got here. And there's no sort, auto sort, nothing like <laughs> nothing like that. Just be too useful. Okay, so what do we get here? We've got half plates and a heavy mace. That heavy mace is probably better than that sword. Let's see. Yeah, so we got a plus four to hit with this mace. Let's try the plate armor. 17 still. What? So I guess the half plate is identical. Alright, let's see. We got a tattered letter here. You found this note on the body of an orc. Unfortunately, it is written in orc and you fail to understand the meaning. If only there was an extremely intelligent person that's really good with languages. There's bandit now. Let's see what that does. Okay, so that did help. All right, so things are looking up. We have a great axe here, although he's already specialized in a long sword. But I'll tell you what, I got an idea. Let's go ahead and give a short bow. Give him a short bow. What's a hand axe? Light weapon. Doesn't mention if it could be thrown or not. Just a little light axe. Give him a shield. That'll give him a little more AC. One more point. Stupid phone keeps thinking I'm talking to it. Alright, what else do we have? Longsword Falchion. I wonder if my, uh... I guess my mage can use a short bow. Proficiency Martial, though, so they will... Yeah, they're gonna be missing. It's practically worthless. This one is, uh... It's kind of interesting. So is this guy proficient with a short bow? Proficiency Marshall. You know, I'm curious enough, I'm gonna have to check that out. Let's see, feats. No? So anyway, I'm not going to keep going, but I'm going to show you some of the other game. But you can see, you leveled up, you get to pick another feat. Uh, we can uh, certainly go back, show that lady the letter. we got slightly better armor now. You know, it is, you can have a lot of fun with this. Oh, there's a heavy crossbow. Proficiency all. So if, if I use that instead of the bow, so you get that... A lot better chance to hit with that. So that's probably not even worth messing with there. Let's see, battle axe. <laughs> it's so addictive, man. <laughs> scale mail. Scale mail. So you might be tempted to put this armor on your mage. But remember, you got mage armor, and this has an arcane failure 15. It's already, there's enough trouble with concentration already. I just don't think that would be the smart move. So I think, you know, this is something we could do. We could give, uh, give our mage the heavy mage, or the cleric the heavy mage. It gives him a little bit better chance to hit. And then we could give this masterwork great axe to our uh, archer. So that's looking pretty good. So she could... She keep messing with the, uh, the longbow, <laughs> but some of the cool things you can find later in this game. There's a lot of uh, magic arrows and things that'll give you a nice boost. I'm just gonna go out of town so you can see the. Uh... So here's the overland view, and what's cool about this? I mean, for one, you can see all these areas you can go to, but you can get a lot of random encounters on the way. And I found that 
to survive this cave, you have to uh, get a couple levels. At least I couldn't do it without that. So I was just kind of clicking around, getting into a lot of uh, random encounters, grinding basically. And then I was able to do the cave. Uh, Alright, so I think that's enough of this opening. Uh, I'll reload. Uh, I'll load my other game so you can see some of the later content. Alright, so I wanted to show you a little bit of the later game, and you can see here I've got uh, level 10 guys. Let me see if I can bring up their character sheets. Yeah, so they're level 10, so they're doing really <laughs> better than they were. And I want to show you a few things like the uh, magic arrows you can find. It's all sorts of great gear, a lot of uh, cool stuff, cool effects on it, like this ornate snake sword. Benefit from accelerated movements, allowing an extra attack per turn. So you can find lots and lots of really cool stuff, and you can even make your own. If you go into crafting, I think I've got crafting on this guy, for example. You can try to... Uh, well, let me do that for some reason, but you can enchant your gear. I think I selected the wrong one. Here we go. Yeah, enchant a weapon or armor. So if you're, you know, it's the same when I created some characters. If you do really want to play with an unusual weapon, you can't ever find a magic weapon of that type. You can try enchanting it like I did there. So this is just an ordinary mace, but I enchanted it plus one. And depending on how much XP you want to spend, you, know, you could stick all kinds of effects on this. You see it costs a lot of uh, gold, but... Instead of trying to find a vendor that would have something, or luckily hope, hoping that it'll drop, you can just enchant it. So I think that's really, really cool. I like that. And then also you can craft your own uh, wands. You can enchant the wands, describe a scroll. So let's just take a look there. So you can, so you can put really powerful stuff on it. Of course, that will cost you some XP and some gold, but... Yeah, as you can see by this point, yeah, plenty of gold. Especially if you're diligent about picking stuff up, selling it. So I'm really happy with these guys. They got lots of cool stuff on them. I think I just fought some more the next round of those elementals here. Yeah, <laughs> she wants me to fight some more elementals. And these will be super tough, but I'm not going to show you that. I want to show you some of the... Some of the different locales you can visit. So I've done the Orc Stockade. I've done Corinth. I think the next spot on my... Uh, well, listen, let me show you the, uh, the journal. Let's see. Where we do we go? On the cold, dead body of minor slaver Lord Kessa, we have found a letter signed by the High Council Instructions or to send the latest shipment to the northern city of Tana Lees using the mountain route. Or roots. Route to root. I never. I can never keep those straight. <laughs> I see mountain pass, fortress, fire pits, passage. There's tantalites. So I can't click on that. So I need to go to passage or mountain pass. Let's try mountain pass. Yes, there is one of the random encounters I was telling you about. You encounter a group of four wolves. I love the music. I wonder if there's a way I can view it. There we go. Wolves are cunning animals and hunt in packs. They often flank and overrun their opponents. <clears throat> They're flat-footed. So if I can get in there quick enough, I can... Uh... I wonder if I could sound burst them. A little too far away. Let's see if I can creep up. Get a little closer. You know, again, you can use the number pad. Okay, Righteous Might. Probably overkill. Still a little sound burst. Ah, there we go. Perfect. <clears throat> One, stunned. Four, stunned. Two. <laughs> Pass the sword to check. So if you're really smart, I guess you can get up in here and, like, look at them and and see what their scores are. So like, they basically no willpower. 
So any kind of willpower spell, they would, uh, you know, get impacted by it. <clears throat> Scooch in there. As you can see with this group, too, I have the uh, two knights. Boom! He's got this awesome sword that does a little fire damage at the end of it. I think it's one, one or two d6 of fire damage. And my mage, meanwhile, <clears throat> he's got all kinds of great AoEs. I mean, about half the time, he just wipes them all out with something. Again, kind of overkill for this, but... You know, just to, for, for the sake of showing you. So that's going to do 35 points of damage to each one of these things. It's going to wipe them out. Boom. <laughs> Boom. Boom and dead. Now the only problem with that is, again, you can't just rest anywhere. I can't just rest here, for example. So that's, you know, one slot that's not going to be available when I really need it. Group of five lizardmen. Challenge rating of five. Okay, where did that... You know, again, I just really, really wish there was an easier way to scroll the map around. And maybe there is. So this is like some kind of tough terrain, I guess, why I can't move through that. <clears throat> I wonder if these guys have... Uh... Lizard men that live in caves. I don't know if they have ranged attacks or not. It says claw attack, bite attack. So maybe they'll come to me. I'll just ready my attack. Yeah, move him there. Ready. He does have a bow. <laughs> Bad morale. Yeah, his bow makes him uh, <laughs> really depressed to get hit by a <laughs> wizard with a crossbow. <laughs> this, uh... I don't know if he's got a... He's got a decent chance of hitting. Oh, they're not getting close to my warriors. I think if I move right there, I should be able to cleave. Boom, boom, cleave. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I love a game like this where you really do see the... You get more powerful, and the monsters don't just automatically get tougher too, so you never feel that sense of awesomeness. This one, you definitely... You definitely get to the point where you're just kicking butt. The same stuff that was just really giving you pain before. Now it's payback time. You are insignificant, lizard man. Back to your terrariums. I even got a little treasure out of that. I could pick up this uh, scythe, but it's only worth 18 gold. You generally want to save your precious slots for more valuable treasure. Damn. This is like the... I never had so many random encounters. I got a vampire here. I'll look at him. Uh, there are things that can permanently affect you and you have to do restoration. You know, lower your levels and so on. See, pale skin, red eyes. Nocturnal predators. Got a slam attack. <clears throat> I wonder if he's got... You don't want to show me that. I don't know how serious of a... It says it's only a five. You know what I can do? I can hit him with a searing light. Which, uh, if it's an undead creature, they take up the 10d6. And I guess it's not as effective against the construct. So let's just try the searing light on him. Oh, he's a little bit out of range. Okay, well that stinks. I don't think I can get any closer. Eh, I'll just ready him. He's not that far away. Oh well. <laughs> Look at the spells this guy's got. 
Mass Bull Strength, Rusting Grasp, the classic Cone of Cold, one of my favorites. Let's try to hold the monster. Feeble Mind. You recognize all of these, right? I think that's why people are comparing this to the Gold Box games or Dark Sun Shattered Lands. You know, because it's using all the same, same spells. Let's go ahead and ready him. Hoping I can just, you know, he'll just come up and boom, boom. One point of damage. Oh, and he lived to tell the tale. I'll delay this guy. Now you can do the Searing Light. Probably a waste of spell points, but what the hell. <laughs> 35! 17 gold coins. So, I mean, this is decent XP. That's full plate. Now, see, this is 1,500 gold. I think that's worth picking up. Let's see. Can we get to this mountain fast? My god. Now we got a troll to deal with. And these guys regenerate health. <clears throat> yeah, the rage on that is not very good. I do have bows on everybody, but it's usually better just to use your melee weapons. Alright. Should we just do the classic magic missile? Oh. Full strength. What would be really good to use on a troll? Fireball is kind of a waste. Burning hands. Can't reach him with that. I just do the classic magic missile. What's what's what I like about this magic missile is uh, you can split them up however you want. So you can shoot. If there's four enemies here, you can shoot them all. You know, you think it. I would like it if it was smart enough just to, since there's only one mob, just go ahead and shoot them all at him. But it is nice being able to uh, select multiple mobs. Okay, now we can use. Let's see. <laughs> Divine power! You know, the trouble with this is you'll probably be dead before the next round, so I wouldn't even get to use that. Like the Righteous Might. So it takes your whole turn to cast it. Unless it's going to be a major, you know, battle that lasts several rounds, it's not worth it. I didn't check. After this, I'll see if I can cast that out of combat. Boom! Oh, he, he regenerated. Whoa, he's doing a lot of damage. Look at that. This might be a little more serious than I thought. He's got 105 hit points. Go ahead and magic missile him again. Damn troll! Stay off my YouTube page! Alright, well... I know... He ain't gonna like my fire elemental. Oh, should have moved. Keep forgetting about that. Well, searing light. No line of sight. Oh, there's a bush. Dang. I'll go ahead. Oh, I can't cure. <laughs> I'm just screwed. <laughs> okay. It'd be nice to flank, but if you get an attack of opportunity on me, I don't think it'd be worth it. There he's dead. Two gold coins and a breastplate. Two hundred. Nah. See, I wonder if that's what he was thinking with that reduce weapon, reduce armor business. Maybe like the troll breastplate would be too big for me and I have to shrink it. <clears throat> Alright, so weird. At the mountain pass. This is where your map comes in handy. And it's always worth exploring around. Because you will put little special treasures and things. What is this? Wow, brown bear, 93 health. Okay. <clears throat> Three attacks. 
like loving that. Massive territorial beasts. Amy gets two claw attacks that do 1d8 plus 10. This ain't anybody to be messing with. I could try to slay living. I guess that's a touch attack. Let's try that out. Kind of curious. Think it'll work? Probably not. Uh, let's see. Melee touch attack. It must make a successful fortitude saving throw. If it makes it save, it still takes 3d6. Plus one point for every caster level. Let's see what this says. It's fortitude, right? So he's unfortunately got a high fortitude, so that probably would not work. <laughs> I could try to grapple a bear. <laughs> uh, what else can we hit him with? He's probably going to try to hit me since I'm next, since I'm a cleric. So I think I might use my shield of faith. I guess I can't cast it on myself. Alright, well, let's see. What else can we do? Uh, protection for evil? He's probably not evil. He's just a bar. Alright. Righteous might it is. <laughs> Whoa, of course he's going for the wizard. Didn't see that coming. Now he's got me... He's got me uh, pinned, I guess. What is pinned? I could try to break free. Failure, of course. 14. We're doing a lot of damage to him, but he's... Oh, he's only got five left. I kind of want this giant baller. <laughs> like, look, I got all big and don't kill it yet. Sorry. Wasted that. What a waste of a divine... Righteousness. There's probably something cool where that bear was. I bet you he was guarding some treasure, but I just want to kind of finish scoping this out. What the hell is that? I guess I hadn't seen that before. A rock. Whoa. He's got 127 health. It's kind of like he's camouflaged a little bit. You know, some glitter dust would probably be just the thing for him. Let's see, I can't remember if that's a mage. Fine, let's see if I can. Yeah, I might be able to hit him with that. Let's try that. 32 points of damage. So even though he's concealed, I'm still doing some. Ooh, ooh, ooh! Ah! Ah, wait, wait a minute! Come on! How many attacks? Was that like five attacks? Good lord! Gets four of these claw attacks, and I guess he gets a bite attack on top of that? Damn! Still got half his health. Hmm. Let's see if. Oh, I can't reach him. Damn it. Probably gonna be one of those spells you have to have a full turn. Old monster. 31%. Good try it. Yeah, of course he resisted. I better check on my guys here. 22 health. I'm gonna have to cure him. Unbelievable. Heal him up. Come on. Brock! Oh, he's grappled. This just gets better and better. So I can't land anything on him, but... Can try that again, but you know what? Feeble mine. Greater invisibility might be useful. Or stone skin. Haste is a really nice spell. Let me, uh, out of range. He's got 76 health left, too. Hmm. Yeah, I think I'll see if I can put stone skin on my dude there. Damage reduction. That said, I could use bull rush, right? To 
I guess this guy doesn't have that option. He's probably going to take a lot of damage being grappled. Let's see what else I can throw at this guy. And you know, maybe I should try the Righteous Mind again. <laughs> I'm mighty now. So all we, I think all he can do is try to break free. Oh, wow! He actually did it! Amazing! Alright. <laughs> and he's grappled again. Alright, what's the nastiest thing I can throw at this guy? If I try to cone him, cold him, I'm just gonna... Yeah, it's gonna damage my own guys. Uh, da, 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 da. What about heroism? Makes the creature behave bravely in battle. Morale bonus of plus two. And attack rolls. Well, that might be useful, but... Stinking Burst. <laughs> you ever cast a Stinking Burst? I bet you have. There's Poison Gas. That's the next step up from that. Ah, you know what? When in doubt, Magic Missile. Oh, he resisted a Magic Missile? Damn. This guy must have some serious Magic Resistance. Alright. <laughs> it's only got a 52% chance. Alright, what is this bull bull rush? Bull rush is most useful in conjunction. You can also use a bull rush to break a grapple. Okay, let's try it then. <laughs> Get off my friend! Critical hits. Critical hit! Five points of damage. <laughs> See... You see that uh, stone skin, man, did a great job protecting him. Absorbed all that. They still got 55 health left, which is great. All right, 26. Magic Missile didn't do very good. Could try, maybe I sh can't reach him with that. Hmm. Acid Ray? Uh, it's not gonna do any damage. Ah, 4% chance. Yeah, that'll work. Try to hold him again. Eh, you know, I'm just gonna... He resists some of these magic missiles, but... Hopefully I'll be able to do... Get him a little bit closer to dead. Let's see, what's happening here? So, Shandar attacks and concealment roll 58, concealment chance 20% success, armor class 22, loses 2 damage, reduction reduced, fire damage to 0. So, he's got some pretty good damage resistance. Critical hits. At least he's not. I'm glad he keeps going for my guy that's got the stone skin on him. Scooter dust, let's see. All creatures in the, in the area of effect blind. Invisible creatures covered by the particles lose their invisibility. This spell not affected by resistance. Well, it appears to be. <laughs> That's just... Oh, he's blind. All right. Well, that helped. Ah. Damn. Barack. Barack Obama. Whoa. What is that? Looks like he's got some, uh, some really good bracers. Plus three armor bracers. Oh, I got plus five. <laughs> That's still pretty cool treasure. All right, all right. I think I've, uh, you know, shown you guys enough for you to make a pretty good judgment. Uh, you know, I haven't played all the way through it, obviously. There's, uh, let me, uh, give me one second here, what do I, <laughs> I just can't talk and be looking at my guys taking damage, all right. Leave a little, uh, leave that on. Uh, so all in all, I really, really enjoy this game, as you probably have detected. There's, it's certainly, a, you could say it's a bit rough around the edges, or the, 
the balancing needs work, you know, something like that if you like. I mean, personally, I kind of like the roughness of it. It feels a lot more to me like those classic uh, CRPGs where, yeah, if you're, if you're not really paying attention, uh, if you get off in an area you're not supposed to be in, uh, if you don't do some grinding, uh, you probably will not be able to survive the battles. And there was a ch time in this place called the Orc Stockade, and I'm told this isn't even the hardest part of this game. Uh, but I was in this Orc Stockade, got way into it, and then the, they shut the door on me so I couldn't go out. So I ended up basically having to reload uh, a save game I just happened to have before I went into the Orc Stockade. But, you know, if I hadn't had that, I would have had to just start all the way over. Uh, so uh, you really want to have, uh, you know, a couple of rolling saves, maybe put save game number one as your def default, but every now and then just save to a different one because you can get it into an unwinnable state. Again, that's uh, some people hate that. Uh, they say that's poor development, poor design or whatever. Uh, I just see it kind of as a, a vestige, really, of these earlier games because that's the way most of them were. It's not some, something I'm used to doing. Uh, just kind of lucked out that time. Uh, what else can I say about it? As, probably the biggest criticism I can make, I don't really care about the that bit about getting it into a state. <laughs> like that. You know, have a couple of different save games, you'll be fine. Uh, the other beefs I have, I don't like the inventory system. Picking up objects is a real pain in the butt. Your inventory gets full really quick. I haven't seen a bag of holding yet. You know, again, there might be stuff that happens later I'm not aware of, but it would be nice to have some better way to manage your inventory. Uh, that's, a, that's a big one. Um, the graphics are very limited. Even for a game like this, you know, the not... You know, these, these knights look identical except for a different color shield. I mean, come on. That's very lame. Uh, they should at least have a like an axe or a spear. You know, at least give me different weapons. Don't show me with a shield if I don't have a shield. I mean, that's not even 90s. I mean, that's, that's like early uh, 80s games <laughs> with that kind of limitation. Uh, I don't know what's up with that. You think he would pay somebody, you know, to make a couple of... Uh, shouldn't take two. I'm fairly confident even I... Even me, with my extremely limited graphics, <laughs> artistic skills, you know, could line up some pixels to look like an axe. You know, I feel like I could do that. So that's kind of a thing I, I don't want to let slide by. Uh, it's kind of a big deal in a game a game when you get a new weapon. You kind of want to see it on your character. And you just see it you see it in the inventory. Right? You can see it there, but it's not reflected on your character. So, eh. Uh, other nitpicks, the obviously the wall tiles are very samey. You know, everything's just kind of square. Again, very basic. There's no... Uh, I think I can attack diagonally. Yeah, so there is that. But, you know, it, it, it doesn't bother me. I kind of get used to it. But it does kind of feel very simplistic. You know, it'd be... You probably should have some more tiles. Some more wall tiles. More ground tiles. Again, shouldn't be anything too expensive to do just to make this look a little bit more uh, polished. So those are just kind of superficial things, though. Don't really affect the, the main... I feel like where you mainly focused was really trying to get those rules implemented well. Uh, have good tactical turn-based combat. Uh, and that part, I think, he really succeeds. You know, every battle, even like the little easy ones of like wolves and stuff out in the wilderness... Uh, even those are kind of interesting because you have so many different ways you can go about the battles. Uh, it's a good, good range of weapons, uh, the feats, you know, of course, all that's out of a D and D. So there's, I think, there's a lot more to like here than to criticize. You know, I have uh, seen some ridiculous stuff. If you look at the comments, this is one reason you probably should watch a gameplay video instead of just reading the reviews on uh, <laughs> some of these sites. <laughs> I mean, it's just ludicrous some of the stuff. I mean, you see everything from this game sucks, it's not worth the 20 bucks or whatever, all the way up to this is better than the gold box games, or this is right up there with the... Uh, I think I actually saw somebody say this was better than uh, Pool of Radiance, uh, which is ludicrous in my opinion. It might be as good as, they say, Dark Sun. Never really got into that series, but I understand it has some, uh, some problems. I should probably do a video on those soon, how to give those a whirl. Uh, but just my personal experience, I think this is an awesome, awesome game. Uh, even the little nitpicky stuff, you know, I don't really care about that. Shouldn't be a big deal. I'm going to tell you how much this game costs. And you do have to go directly to his website. 
which is uh, heroicfantasygames.com. And you can, again, play that free demo. There's a free demo right on the site. If you're not sure, and it's 1250 pounds. <laughs> how much did I spend on this? Buy now. Let's see, 1250. I'm trying to tell you how much that 1250 euros or whatever that is. So I think that's the euro mark. Right. 1250 GPB. What is it in real money? <laughs> Damn it. I don't want to actually buy it. I just want to know. Let's see, choose the way to pay. All right, so it's $16.45. Uh, by the time you if you try to use PayPal, but uh, I think that is money well spent. Now, what I, and what I really love about this, getting it from his website, is you know that all that money goes straight to Pierre. None of it goes to Gog. None of it goes to Steam. Or all the middlemen, middle people. Uh, so I like that. Now there is talk about doing. I guess he's working on a sequel now. Seems like there's been some false starts with that. Uh, I'm not sure if that one. If you, if you need to play this one before you play that one or anything like that. But, but anyway, I think this is a very solid game. It's got a few issues, but I think the uh, the positives more than outweigh uh, the negatives. If I was, if Pierre was here, if he ever does interviews, I don't know. <laughs> I'd tell him, look, Pierre, for God's sake, give me an easier way to scroll this damn map around. This is a pain. You know, I'd like to be able to hold the middle mouse button down and scroll around that way. That would be great. And I think the, you know, I understand it's he's going for this classic look and everything. The resolution is sort of is what it is, but I, I like to have a higher resolutions. That would be great, even if a lot of the screen is black. You know, it's kind of weird to have a big monitor, but then be limited to the, you know, just one small region. So I don't know how tough that would be to implement. Main thing for me would be the what, to fix the uh, map scrolling. Have a better inventory system, you know, do an auto sort, for God's sake. If you don't already have the, you might already have a way to expand this backpack somehow, so I don't want to harp on that too much, but that would be nice. It's a way to do that. Have like a bag of holding. <laughs> That's what I keep hoping I'm going to find. And again, there might be something like that, so. You know, there's obviously a lot. I've never found a belt, for example. I don't think I got any necklaces either. So there's, there's probably quite a bit of this that I haven't seen. According to uh, Pierre, there's as much content here as in... Actually, I don't know if Pierre himself said this. Some, somewhere, somebody somewhere said there's as much content here as is in the uh, Baldur's Gate. Uh, Baldur's Gate game. where, And I believe that because there's lots of places on that world map uh, I haven't gotten even close to. And I feel like I've already gotten more than my $16 worth out of this game. It's really cool. Uh, so anyway, there you have it. Nice of the Chalice. Really loving this. It's very addictive, very fun, very frustrating in a good way. I mean, you will be screaming a lot, you know, especially when you have like 95% chance to hit and everything's just down to this one. You got like, like one guy left, all bases loaded, you know, and he still misses. And you're just like, ah! You know, you got that. Uh, I haven't fought any rats. And that's probably the big, the biggest deal breaker for me. I'm like, come on, centipedes, give me a damn rat. Uh, I don't know if they're in here and I just haven't gotten to them yet, so there's always there's always the hope. But I'm kind of far for not to have a rat fight. I mean, you fought, fought kinds of dogs, wolves, was that a freaking uh, Vrock? You know, I'd rather have a rat than Vrock Obama uh, in my game. <laughs> I just got to be silly at this point. <laughs> uh, anyway, go ahead and get it. Knights of the Chalice. Uh, Heroic Fantasy, just look for that. I'll put the link in the show notes. But I think you'll uh, really enjoy this game, uh, especially if you're into uh, 90s era uh, CRPGs. So uh, that'll do it for Knights of the Chalice. Thank you. And that's all for this week's episode. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, should be back. i got lots more games I would like uh, to look at if you have recommendations for people you want to see me interview uh, or games you'd like to see covered here on the channel. Just please uh, submit that in the comments section. Always uh, love to see those. Uh, uh, see what you guys think would be worth looking at. What you think people uh, should know about. Uh, you know, this Knights of the Chalice game. 
Uh, I like to look at games like this because they are labors of love and I hate to see that much work and really a fun game just kind of go under the radar. Uh, people not uh, giving it its due reward, so hopefully uh, some of you will be inspired to go check out the uh, website, heroicfantasygames.com, and uh, pick this game up. I think you will really enjoy it. Uh, as always, I want to thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, and uh, uh, even thank you over there for supporting this, this show. Uh, you guys and gals make this possible. There would be no Matt Chat without the Ratrons. <laughs> uh, so if you would like to become a Ratron yourself, just go to that link on the show notes to the Patreon site. All I ask is a buck a show, $1 or 50,000 pounds or 70 billion, uh, uh, what was that other currency? Kroners. <laughs> and you can become a noble uh, rat yourself, rather excellent one. I think you have a lot of fun and people tell me all the time, uh, they're so happy they started to uh, started to support the show because it really makes the show more enjoyable to feel like, you know, you did your part. You're part of the team. Uh, you're making these videos too. Uh, so anyway, thank you so much for supporting the show. I really, really appreciate that. All right. So what about that news from the Matt Cave? Oh my God, so much news. You got this E3 thing coming out, so it's kind of non-stop fire hose style. You know, I don't typically pay too much attention to that. A lot of it's just marketing and, you know, vaporware and just general nonsense. But there's some uh, really cool stuff out there. Uh, I just mentioned one. Uh, Wasteland 3, the E3 2019 official trailer. Now, I assume you guys probably know about Wasteland 2. You know, it was uh, some... I guess some people don't like it. You know, I really enjoyed it a lot. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to this Wasteland 3 game. It's currently in development with a target release in the in spring 2020. Uh, so it's going to be a party-based role-playing game with a renewed focus on the complex story reactivity, reactivity and strategic combat. So they'll have a player vehicle, environmental... I can't wait to see what that looks like. Uh, environmental dangers and a revamped, more fluid action system. Deeper tactical turn-based combat, a unique encounter design. Play by yourself over the friend in story-driven story synchronous or asynchronous multiplayer. Uh, so that's the part I'm really interested in. I really want to see what they're talking about there. It sounds like they're really trying to innovate within that co-op uh, co uh, sphere, which is pretty cool. Your Ranger base is a core part of the experience. It's set in Colorado, and it has a newly revamped dialogue tree system from the celebrated writers of Torment, Tides of Numenera. So a lot of interesting uh, aspects to this. Of course, we'll have to wait and see uh, how well it holds up, but I'm fairly optimistic about it. A uh, second bit of news is from good old Stig. He wrote in about this. Uh, this is from Game Informer. Limited Run announces Lucasfilm partnerships to re-release definitive collector's edition of classic Star Wars games. They're going to start off with, uh, this is June 28th, it will start off with Bo Star Wars Bounty Hunter for PS4 and Star Wars for NES and Game Boy. They're also looking at games beyond that for PC, amongst others, uh, Dark Forces, Rebel Assault, TIE Fighter, X-Wing, and many more. Uh, so I was curious what these collectible editions may entail. And this company has done some previous ones. They did one for Wonder Boy. And they for that one, they included reversible cover art, 24-page manual. It came with a full-color poster, two-disc soundtrack, a pack of 10 trading cards, and a bunch of other little things. And a very uh, uh, a throwback design uh, of the outer box. So they really went to town on it. Uh, so I'm really pumped about this. But what's really exciting to me is that they are apparently... Or there's some uh, rumors that they're going to be doing more than Star Wars games. Also be doing uh, the graphical adventure games like Monkey Island. Uh, hopefully they'll get the ones like uh, Full Throttle, uh, The Dig, uh, Sam and Max. You know, who knows what all might be included in this. Uh, but that's really, really exciting. You know, I don't even have a... You know, even getting, a, getting on eBay trying to get box copies of some of those games can get really expensive. Uh, so it's it's going to be exciting. I think these will be true collector's uh, editions. I'm really looking forward to that. Thank you, Stig, for that. And Stig also wrote in about the Crimson Diamond. This has got a lot of people talking over on my Matt Chat Facebook page. Uh, this is an EGA text parser mystery adventure game 
where you play as amateur geologist and reluctant detective Nancy Maple. Follow Nancy, uh, follow Nancy as she travels north of the fictional ghost town of Crimson, Ontario, to investigate the discovery of a massive diamond. Uh, so this, a lot of people are comparing this to the uh, Laura Bow uh, adventure game series. There's a free demo of this on Steam. It's a game by Julia Minamata. Uh, so really, really exciting stuff. Uh, I know a lot of you folks will be interested in that. And then finally, one last bit of news. I still have some copies left uh, for signing of Dungeons & Desktops 2.0. This is the definitive, uh, <laughs> definitive uh, second edition of this book. It's been getting... Uh, Really over-the-top, fantastic uh, five-star reviews all over the place. I know you guys have been uh, seeing some of that. So if you don't already have a copy of it, uh, you could consider going to my, uh, or the link in the show notes to the eBay page. I've got, I think, four copies left of this. I'll sign it for you or make it out however you like. And I'm even including uh, one of the famous Matt Chat Challenge collectible coins with that at no additional charge to you. Uh, it's the same price as on Amazon. The only problem, unfortunately, is the shipping. Uh, so I tried to put lots of options there. Obviously, it's cheaper if you live in the U.S. But, uh, you know, we could try to make, you know, look at some of those other options. There's some uh, Worldwide Express options. So hopefully you can get it down to a reasonable uh, price. But I really think you guys will love this book. You know, I think uh, it's, you know, I haven't heard anybody say anything bad about it yet. So that's all. <laughs> Here's hoping for some negative reviews. But <laughs> uh, anyway, check it out. I think you really like that. And I think you'll like the uh, coin by our uh, wonderful artist, Robbie. Uh, he's really proud of those. And he also did the cover art for the book. So kind of a double collector's dream there uh, for the same price as you'd get the book, just the book on Amazon. So uh, definitely consider that. And the link for that will be in the show notes. All right, so let's wrap it up then with a quotation. I was looking for quotes about chalices, and I don't know what to think about this one. It's from Danny Kay, of all people. Uh, it goes something like this. Let's see if I can do this justice. The pellet with the poisons and the vessel with the pestle. The chalice from the palace has the brew that is true. I'll ponder on that, and see you guys next time. Camelot. 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 It's only a model.